Sir Joseph Wilson Swan, born 31st of October 1828, died 27th of May 1914. Sir Joseph Swan was an English physicist, chemist and inventor. He is known as an independent early developer of a successful incandescent light bulb and is the person responsible for developing and supplying the first incandescent lights used to illuminate homes and public buildings, including the Savoy Theatre in London in 1881. In 1904, Swan was knighted by King Edward VII, awarded the Royal Society's Hughes Medal, and was made an honorary member of the Pharmaceutical Society. He had received the highest decoration in France, the Legion of Honour, when he visited the 1881 International Exposition of Electricity in Paris. The exhibition included displays of his inventions, and the city was lit with his electric lighting. Joseph Wilson Swan was born in 1828 at Pallian Hall in Pallian, in the parish of Bishop Weymouth in Sunderland, County Durham. His parents were John Swan and Isabella Cameron. Swan was apprenticed for six years to a Sunderland firm of druggists, Hudson and Osbaldiston. However, it is not known if Swan completed his six-year apprenticeship, as both partners subsequently died. He was said to have an inquiring mind, even as a child. He augmented his education with a fascination of his surroundings, the industry of the area, and reading at Sunderland Library. He attended lectures at the Sunderland Athenaeum. Swan subsequently joined Mawson's, a firm of manufacturing chemists in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, started in the year of his birth by John Mawson, <clears throat> the husband of his sister, Elizabeth Swan. In 1846, Swan was offered a partnership at Mawson's. The company subsequently existed as Mawson, Swan and Morgan until 1973, formerly located on Grey Street in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, near Grey's Monument. The premises, now occupied by Burger Chain restaurant Byron, can be identified by a line of Victorian-style electric street lamps in the front of the store on Grey Street. Swan lived at Underhill, Lawfell in Gateshead, a large house on Kells Lane North, where he conducted most of his experiments in the large conservatory. The house was later converted into a private fee-paying grant-aided co-educational grammar school named the Beaconsfield School. Here, students could still find examples of Swan's original electrical fittings. The Electric Light In 1850, Swan began working on a light bulb using carbonised paper filaments in an evacuated glass bulb. By 1860, he was able to demonstrate a working device and obtained a British patent covering a partial vacuum carbon filament incandescent lamp. However, the lack of a good vacuum and an adequate electric source resulted in an inefficient light bulb with a short lifetime. In 1875, Swan returned to consider the problem of the light bulb with the aid of a better vacuum and a carbonised thread as a filament. The most significant feature of Swan's improved lamp was that there was little residual oxygen in the vacuum tube to ignite the filament, thus allowing the filament to glow almost white hot without catching fire. However, his filament had low resistance, thus needing heavier copper wires to supply it. Swan first publicly demonstrated his incandescent carbon lamp at a lecture for the Newcastle-upon-Tyne Chemical Society on 18th of December. 1878. However, after burning with a bright light for some minutes in his laboratory, the lamp broke down due to excessive current. On 17th of January 1879, this lecture was successfully repeated with the lamp shown in actual operation in the picture. Swan had solved the problem of incandescent electric lighting by means of a vacuum lamp. 
On 3rd of February 1879, he, pub he publicly demonstrated a working lamp to an audience of over 700 people in the lecture theatre of the Literary and Philosophical Society of Newcastle upon Tyne. Sir William Armstrong of Cragside presiding. Swan turned his attention to producing a better carbon filament than the means of attaching its ends. He devised a method of treating cotton to produce parchmentized thread and obtained British patent 4933 on 27th of November 1880. From that time he began installing light bulbs in homes and landmarks in England. His house, Underfill, in Lawfell in Gateshead, was the world's first to have working light bulbs installed. The Lit and Fill Library in Westgate Road, Newcastle, was the first public room lit by electric light during a lecture by Swan on 20th of October 1880. In 1881, he founded his own company, the Swan Electric Light Company, and started commercial production. The Savoy, a state of the art theatre in the city of Westminster, London, was the first public building in the world lit entirely by electricity. Swan supplied about 1,200 incandescent lamps powered by an 88.3 kilowatt generator on open land near the theatre. The builder of the Savoy, Richard O'Doyley Cart, explained why he had introduced Swan's electric light. The greatest drawbacks to the enjoyment of the theatrical performances are, undoubtedly, the foul air and heat which pervades all theatres. As everyone knows, each gas burner consumes as much oxygen as many people and causes great heat beside. The incandescent lamps consume no oxygen and cause no perceptible heat. The first generator proved too small to power the whole building. And though the entire front of house was electrically lit, the stage was lit by gas until 28th of December 1881. At that performance, Cart stepped on stage and broke a glowing light bulb before the audience to demonstrate the safety of Swan's new technology. On 29th of December 1881, the Times described the electric lighting as superior visually to gaslight. The first private residence, other than the inventors, lit by the new incandescent lamp, was that of his friend, Sir William Armstrong, at Cragside Estate, near Rothbury, Northumberland. Swan personally supervised the installation there in December 1880. Swan had formed the Swan Electric Light Company Limited with a factory in Benwell, Newcastle, and had established the first commercial manufacture of incandescent light bulbs by the beginning of 1881. Swan's carbon rod lamp and carbon filament lamp, while functional, were still rel relatively impractical due to low resistance and short running life. While searching for a better filament for his light bulb, Swan inadvertently made another advance. In 1881, he developed and patented a process for squeezing nitrocellulose through holes to form conducting fibres. His newly established company, use Swan's cellulose filaments in their bulbs. The first ship to use Swan's invention was the City of Richmond, owned by the Inman Line. She was fitted with incandescent lamps in June 1881. The Royal Navy also introduced them to their ship soon after, with the HMS Inflexible having the new lamps installed in the same year. An early employment in engineering was during the digging of the Seven Tunnel where contractor Thomas Walker installed 20 candle power lamps in the temporary pilot tunnels. Swan was one of the early developers of the electric safety lamp for miners, exhibiting his first in Newcastle at the North of England Institute of Mining and Mechanical Engineers in May 1881. This required a wired supply, so the following year he presented one with a battery and other improvised versions followed. By 1886, a lamp with better light output than a safety flame lamp was in production by the Edison Swan Company. However, it suffered from problems of reliability and was not a success. It took development by others over the next 20 years or so before effective 
electric lamps were in common use. In what are considered to be independent lines of inquiry, Swan's incandescent electric lamp was developed at the same time that Thomas Edison was working on his incandescent lamp. With Swan's first successful lamp and Edison's lamp both patented in the same year, 1879. Edison's goal in developing his lamp was for it to be used as one part of a much larger system, a long-life high-resistance lamp that could be connected in parallel to work economically with the large-scale electric lighting utility he was creating. Swan's original lamp design, with its low resistance and short lifespan, was not suited for such an application. Swan's strong patents in Great Britain led, in 1883, to the two competing companies merging to exploit both Swan's and Edison's inventions, with the establishment of the Edison and Swan United Electric Light Company, known commonly as Ediswan. The company sold lamps made with the cellulose filament that Swan had invented in 1881, while the Edison company continued using bamboo filaments outside of Britain. In 1882, General Electric began exploiting Swan's patents to produce cellulose filaments until they were replaced in 1904 by a General Electric developed baked cellulose filaments. In 1886, Ediswan moved production to a former jute mill <coughs> at Ponders End, North London. When working with wet photographic plates, Swan noticed that heat increased the sensitivity of the silver bromide emulsion. By 1871, he had devised a method of using dry photographic plates and substituting nitrocellulose plastic for glass plates, thus initiating the age of convenience in photography. Eight years later, he patented bromide paper, developments of which are still used for black and white photographic prints. In 1864, Swan patented the transfer process for making carbon prints a permanent photographic process. By adding the transfer step, Swan was able to easily make photographs with a full tonal range. Later life. In 1894, Swan was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society, and in September 1901, he was awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Science from Durham University. In 1904 he was knighted, awarded the Royal Society's Hughes Medal and made an honorary member of the Pharmaceutical Society. Swan died in 1914 at Warlingham in Surrey. In 1945 the London Power Company commemorated Swan by naming a new 1554 coastal collier, the SS Sir Joseph Swan. To this day, there is still debate on who really invented the light bulb, whether it was Thomas Edison or the north of England's own Sir Joseph Swan. <laughs>